Hi, I'm Mark Barsanian. In the last video, I introduced the chain rule and applied it to functions that have an outer function that is a power function. In this video, I'll be applying the chain rule to functions that have an outer function that is either an exponential function or a logarithm function. This material is from section 3.4 of the book, The Chain Rule, and more specifically from the middle of page 210 to the middle of page 212. Uh, examples 4, B, C, and 5 and 6. The corresponding homework is this collection of three exercises from section 3.4. Let's remember our derivative rules. We've got this collection of basic derivative rules from section 2.5, the rules for the derivatives of exponential and logarithmic functions from section 3.2. We'll be using those a lot today because the subject for today is chain rule problems where the outer function is an exponential or logarithmic function. We have the product rule and quotient rule from section 3.3 and the, the current section 3.4 we've been discussing the chain rule. All right, so today's examples will have outer functions that's an exponential or logarithmic function. We start with this example one. Let f of x equal e to the kx find f prime of x using the chain rule. Here we go. There's the derivative that we've been uh, assigned to do. Now the first thing to do when using the chain rule is to, to notice the form. Recognize that we do have a nested function. We have an inner function, that k times x, sitting inside of parentheses. So everything holding that parentheses could be considered the outer function. So we have a derivative of a function of that form. Let's remind ourselves what the chain rule tells us to do. The chain rule tells us that the derivative of a function of that form is this. So we do the chain rule details off in a box on the side. So our inner function is this kx sitting inside of the parentheses. So we have to find its derivative. So the derivative of the inner function is just the number k. Now we need the outer function. The outer function is whatever is holding the parentheses. So in this case, it's e raised to the parentheses. Notice that's an exponential function. And notice that it's the empty version. Now, according to the chain rule, we need outer prime. Well, how do you find the derivative of e to the parentheses? Well, as we did with uh, outer functions that were power functions before, we can think about what this would be like if it had a variable in it. So if the function was e to the x, its derivative would be e to the x. If the function was e to the t, its derivative would be e to the t. So the function is e to the parentheses, so its derivative is e to the parentheses. So there are the chain rule details. Now we assemble them according to this formula. So there's our outer prime. And according to these instructions, we're supposed to stuff those parentheses with the original inner function. That's just kx. And then according to these instructions, we're supposed to multiply that by inner prime, which is just the number k. Now here we've got to be careful. We've got a, an exponential expression, and we're multiplying it by something. We've got to make sure that we write the inner prime on the baseline. And as is customary, when you have a function and a constant multiplying each other, it's, it's customary to put the constant in front. So we found that for this function, f of x equals e to the kx, the derivative is k e to the kx. Well, remember exponential function rule number two. The derivative of e to the kx is k e to the kx. And remember that the book does not present this equation as a derivative rule. And that's too bad because it's very important. I, I call it a derivative rule. I call it the exponential function rule number two. Remember that that uh, 
derivative can be found using the definition of the derivative, but a key step in those calculations uses a mathematical fact that's above the level of the course. If we wanted to compute this derivative using the definition of the derivative, we would have to accept that, that fact that's above the level of this course. We'd have to accept that as a given fact. And so for that reason, we did not discuss the calculation of this derivative in the video for homework 40 where this was introduced. We just accepted this exponential function rule number two without proof. But now we see that we can uh, find the, that derivative rule, this one, using the chain rule. All right, let's go on. Question number two. f of x is this function. Question a is find f prime parentheses x. So here I started the solution the same way I've started uh, previous solutions. We write down the derivative that we're going to be doing. We recognize that it's got the form of the derivative of a composition of functions. And we recognize that the chain rule tells us how to do that. We replace that derivative expression with this expression. So as before in previous examples today and yesterday, we'll do the chain rule details off to the side in a box. So we write down the inner function. We know we're going to need its derivative. Now the inner prime in that form is, is it's in standard form, but it's actually useful to write this in a slightly different way. I'm going to factor out a factor of 2. And in fact, I'm going to factor out uh, another thing. I'm going to factor out the minus sign. See the expression minus 2 times the quantity x minus 2 is the same as plus 2 times the quantity minus x plus 2. Now we need the outer function and its derivative. Outer function is e to the parentheses. It's the thing that's holding the parentheses. Notice that it's an exponential function. And notice that it's the empty version. Now we need to find its derivative according to this uh, form. So the derivative of e to the parentheses is e to the parentheses. So there are our chain rule details. A couple of things to note here. Notice that I call the outer function e to the parentheses. I don't call it just e. If the outer function were e, that would be a constant. The derivative of a constant is 0. So if the outer function were just e, the derivative of the outer function would be 0. But the outer function is not e. The outer function is e to the parentheses. So its derivative is not 0. Its derivative is e to the parentheses. So there's an important distinction you've got to keep in your mind between the idea of the number e and the function e to the parentheses, or the function e to the x. All right, so now we can use all this stuff in this box to populate that expression. So there you can see that I wrote the inner prime next to the other expression, and I was careful to write it on the baseline and to put it in parentheses. Now I can clean this up by bringing this stuff out front. And there's our f prime of x. Let's go on. Question b. Find the equation of the line tangent to the graph of f at x equals 0. Well, remember our approach. We're going to write down what we're going to do. We're going to build this equation. And our approach is the same approach we always take. We start by getting the parts. So the first part we get is the, the number a, and it's the x-coordinate of, of, of the point of tangency. And that's given to us. a is the number 0. 
the next part we get is F parentheses A. Now that means that we're going to compute F parentheses 0 and we should remind ourselves that that means we're going to substitute X equals 0 into the formula for F of X. So f parentheses a is 1 over e to the fourth. Remember that that's the y coordinate of the point of tangency. And we put that into positive exponent form. We, we found that number, e to the minus fourth, as the, as the y value. But it's, it's nicer to have it in positive exponent form. Finally, we need this. And remember that, that means that we're going to substitute x equals 0 into the formula for f prime of x. Now that's on the previous page. This formula. So we end up with the result that f prime parentheses a is 4 over e to the fourth. Again, we put that into positive exponent form. And remember that that's the slope of the tangent line. Now our approach that we always take is, is to next substitute all these parts into the equation for the tangent line. So we need to substitute the value of a there. We need to substitute the value of f of a there. And we need to substitute the value of f prime parentheses a there. So what we have here is the point slope form of the equation for the tangent line. Now we need to convert to slope intercept form. So there's our equation, y equals 4 over e to the fourth times x plus 1 over e to the fourth. And notice again the way that I've written this. A fraction written next to something that's not a fraction is best presented this way. You put the fraction in parentheses. In the thing that's not a fraction, you make sure that you write up on the baseline, not on the floor. OK, this is quite a long problem. There's actually more. Question C. Find the x-coordinates of all points on the graph that have horizontal tangent lines. Well, we have done problems like this before. Remember, horizontal tangent lines have a slope that's the number 0. So to find the places where the tangent line is horizontal, the strategy is you set f prime equal to 0 and solve for x. So we'll get our formula for f prime of x. There's our formula for f prime of x, and we have to set it equal to 0. Now that seems like a really hard thing to solve. But notice that it's of this form. It's of the form 0 equals a times b. Now there's a boring property from uh, junior high and high school math that says this. If you have 0 equals a times b, then Either a has to be 0, or b has to be 0, or both. Well, in our equation, notice that the thing over here on the right is that exponential expression. But remember what we know about the exponential function. The exponential function has a range that's all y values greater than 0. Remember that the graph of the exponential function looks like this. On that graph, all y values are greater than 0. Now you might say, well, look, we've got something a lot more complicated than just e to the x. But it doesn't matter. This graph 
shows us that no matter what you put up there in the exponent of the exponential function, even if it's this crazy complicated expression, the result is always going to be something that's going to be greater than zero. So that tells us that that thing is never zero. So if we have a product that equals zero, then it must be the thing on the left that is the, the zero thing. We have a product of two things side by side. The thing on the right can never be zero, so therefore the thing on the left has to be zero. Okay, well that equation's only true when x is equal to two. So our solution is the graph has a horizontal tangent line only at x equals two. All right, there's one more part. Question D says, illustrate the results of question B and C on this graph. Well, the, the result of question C is easy. Question C says there is a horizontal tangent line on the graph at x equals two. So we can draw that. Okay, now what about question B? Question B says the equation of the line tangent to the graph of f at x equals zero is this. Well, to illustrate that, we have to uh, draw that tangent line and label it with this formula. Well, the line that's tangent to the graph of f at x equals zero has to touch the graph at x equals zero. That's this point, it's very close to zero. And we have to draw the tangent line there. It's gonna be a very shallow slope. So let's label that line with its equation. Uh, let's remember what the equation looks like. Y equals four over e to the fourth times x plus one over e to the fourth. Notice that this number, e to the fourth, is a very, very small number. e is around 2.7, so e squared is around eight and a half, so e cubed is around, um, uh, e cubed is about um, 20, so e to the fourth is around 70, so one over e to the fourth is around one over 70. That's why this y value is so small. And look at that slope. That slope is four over e to the fourth. That's about four seventieths. So that's why this line has such a shallow slope. So there's, a, there's question D, illustrating our earlier results on the graph. Now, notice something about this graph. This graph looks kind of like a bell. That shape is common in math, and it's actually called a bell-shaped curve. Uh, curves of that shape can be produced by a lot of different kinds of functions, but maybe the most common type is, is this type. f of x is e raised to some polynomial in the exponent, where the polynomial has degree two and a negative leading coefficient. So notice that our function is of that form. It's e raised to a polynomial, and the polynomial has degree two and it has a negative leading coefficient, that negative sign there. So this bell-shaped curve is very famous. It appears in all of the sciences. It appears in engineering, it appears in chemistry, it appears in the social sciences, talking about behavior of, uh, of people taking exams, uh, the, the distribution of exam scores. Uh, is often a bell-shaped curve, so it's a very common function. Okay, let's go on. Example three, f of x is this function, ln of that stuff, find f prime of x. All right, well, let's uh, dive in. So we write down the derivative that we're going to do, and we acknowledge the form, that it's a, a, a composition of functions. There's a function sitting inside of another function. 
and we realize that the, the chain rule tells us what to do with this form. And as we do with all of our chain rule problems, we'll do the details in a chain rule details box. So our inner function is that polynomial. Its derivative is another polynomial. The outer function, though, the thing that's holding the parentheses is this, ln parentheses. So that's a logarithmic function, and it's the empty version. Now how do we find the derivative of that? We need to find outer prime. Well, remember that the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x, so the derivative of ln of parentheses is 1 over parentheses. So we assemble those parts. There's our outer prime. We're supposed to stuff those parentheses with the original inner function. And then we're supposed to multiply by inner prime. Now we have to be careful. We have something that's a fraction multiplying something that's not a fraction. So we have to be sure and write the thing up on the baseline and put it in parentheses. Now we can clean this up. And there's our derivative. Let's go on. Question B, find the equation of the line tangent to the graph of f at x equals 1. Well, we'll take our usual approach. So we write down the equation that we're going to build, and we start by getting the parts. a is given to us. f of a means f of 1, which means we substitute x equals 1 into the formula for f of x. There's our formula for f of x. So we remind ourselves that we're substituting 1 into the formula for f of x. And we end up with ln of 3. Now, f prime parentheses a, that means f prime parentheses 1. We just get the number 2. Now we substitute parts into the equation. There's our tangent line equation in point-slope form. We convert to slope-intercept form. And there's our equation for the tangent line. Let's go on. Question C says find x-coordinates of all points in the graph that have horizontal tangent lines. Well, our strategy is the same we had in the previous example. We're going to set f prime of x equal to 0 and solve for x. Our f prime of x is this equation. So let's copy that onto the next page. So we have a difficult looking equation to solve. We have a fraction that's ugly, a big rational function equal to 0. But remember, that a fraction can only be 0 in one situation. The fraction can only be 0 when its numerator equals 0 and its denominator is not 0. So we have to find the x values that make the numerator 0 first. So we have to solve that equation. Now notice that both of these terms contain a common factor of 2x. So we can factor out a 2x, but remember factoring is always a little bit tricky, so it's always helpful to identify clearly the common factors and what they're being multiplied by. So I'm going to, re I'm going to rewrite this as 
So I didn't factor this yet. I just got ready to factor. I rewrote the thing on the left as 2x times something, and I rewrote the thing on the right as 2x times something. Now we have these things sitting side by side, and it's very clear that they have a common factor. Let's underline the common factor. The common factor is 2x, so we're going to factor this by pulling that out front, and then have parentheses for what gets left behind. Now we have to continue factoring this, actually. Notice that this is a difference of two squares. Now we have to figure out what values of x make this equation true. Well, we see that this first term is 0 exactly once, when x equals 0. So we factored that difference of two squares, and we now have these three terms. The solutions to this equation are x equals 0, clearly, because that will cause that red term to be 0, but there are two more solutions. So the solutions are x equals 0, x equals minus 1 half, x equals 1 half. Those are the x-coordinates where the graph of f has a horizontal tangent line. Question D, we're supposed to illustrate the results of B and C on the given graph. Well, let's look back at what we just did in question C. In question C, we found that the x-coordinates of the points that have horizontal tangent lines are negative 1 half, 0, and 1 half. So in this graph, we'll just put tangent lines on the graph at those x values. So there we show the horizontal tangent lines that are the results of question C. Let's go back up and review our results of question B. Question B, we found this. The equation for the line that's tangent to the graph of f at x equals 1 is y equals 2x minus 2 plus ln of 3. Now in terms of drawing that tangent line, we just have to uh, know the the point of tangency, of course, is where x equals 1 and y equals ln of 3. So we can go down and put that point on the graph. Notice that ln of 3 is a number that's a little bit bigger than 1. Because remember, ln of e is exactly 1. And 3 is a little bit bigger than e. So ln of 3 is going to be a number a little bit bigger than 1. Now, how do we draw the tangent line here and draw it convincingly? Well, let's go back up and look at the equation again. From this equation, the y-intercept is going to be the number minus 2 plus ln of 3. Minus 2 plus a number that's a little bit bigger than 1. So this is going to be a number that's just a little bit above minus 1. It's going to be about minus 0.9. So the number negative 2 plus ln of 3 is the y-coordinate of the y-intercept, and so the tangent line has to connect these two red points. So there's our tangent line that goes between those two points. Notice that the, the slope of this line is the number 2. The coordinate of this point is negative 2 plus ln of 3. The coordinate of this point is just ln of 3. So we've gone up two units. So we went to the right one unit, and we went up two units. So that's the end of that example, and that's the end of this video.